Is this the seven star one? I'm gonna skip it. This is it. what a luxury train ride is like in Japan. Okay, so I'm here at Shinagawa Station in Tokyo and I'm headed down to the Izu area. And what better way to travel there than to do it luxury style. So I'm taking a six seater room all the way there. It's a little bit loud right now, so let's just get on the train and let me show you the experience. So today, I'm riding the Safir Odoriko Luxury Express train that carries passengers between Tokyo and the Izu area, a go-to vacation destination for Tokyo residents including me. Remember I recently did a luxury hotel trip here? So this unique train offers premium seats with a view, in-train restaurant, and a whole lot oh more which I'm gonna God. break down for you in this video. The departure. If you're getting on Shinagawa Station like me, go- Motherfucker obsessed with luxury? First of all, yes. Okay. Yeah. What what of it? What do you got? You got an issue with that? Like it's a treat, man. Go straight to platform number 12 with the orange gate. Should be easy enough. You should know Especially when like you can't even if you can't like enjoy it yourself, it's like fun to find out about it, right? Like why do you have an issue with like learning? Though about that it? there are only two trains per day running each direction. So definitely check the timetables for each station to make sure you get on at the right time. Oh, here comes a train. Booking tickets. Tickets for the Safir Odoriko can be purchased at the JR ticket reservation office called Midori no Madaguchi or at eki-net.com and private room tickets are only available at the ticket reservation office. Safir is currently quite popular so I recommend booking the tickets in advance especially for the private room or premium green seats. For the six seater private room, I had to book three weeks in advance. Okay, let's see what this room looks like. Having a whole ass room to yourself on a train is crazy, dude. Okay, so here we are. I'm in the room. It actually is pretty large. I got six seats. There's only two in this cart and then two in the other cart. So there's a total of these four rooms that you can get. And then there's four four-seater rooms. In fact, this is not the first time I've ridden this. I actually rode this train before with Maiko Wolfie. We took the four-seater the previous time and we actually really had a good time. So I wanted to take all of you guys on this one but show you guys the six seater if you do have a lot of friends and you guys are gonna go on the trip down to izu then we watched seven star already probably a good way to do it so this is pretty amazing just look around these are pretty comfortable chairs itself these are kind of i think hopefully leather chairs they have these mirrors right here it makes it the room just a little bit bigger and they also have these sky windows as well that kind of just opens up the space the lights here i guess are quite interesting you feel like you'd see these on maybe like a ship or something or maybe a train i guess the lights itself they have little ac outlets so if you need to charge your phone or do some pc work i guess if you wanted to you can do that here and apparently they have free wi-fi here as well wow this is amazing you can see the ocean right in front of us let me show you while i enjoy the view let's talk about the price of tickets for this two plus hour ride a ticket from tokyo to izuku shimoto on the green seats are 10,060 yen while the premium green seats are 12,460 yen about 90 dollars and the private rooms are between 33,880 yen to 60,360 yen about 250 to 450 dollars depending what on the, the size of the room and the number of Bro, that's nothing. It's for two hours, but like, bro, that's like the price of a, that's the price of a fucking, uh, I was not expecting that. That's, dude, you're splitting it six ways. What are you fucking crazy? You're splitting it six ways for a two hour fucking train ride. The price of a Shinkansen from Tokyo to, uh, to Kobe is literally the price of the private room, but that's obviously like a much longer uh, distance that you're traveling passengers so another cool thing about this room motherfuckers who never ride trains don't understand like train pricing and immediately rush to go that's so expensive for the amount of like space that you're getting i think it's only because it's like a two-hour uh ride it's like not that long of a distance but yeah that's literally like a like an amtrak a train ticket for a, a long ass fucking distance where it, yeah it's not a, it's not a commuter ticket but it's for a long ass uh 
uh, it, it's relatively cheap for what kind of luxury you're getting. It is. Let me show you. And what's also nice is that you can close a blind for privacy. So, like all my videos, let's go explore this place a little bit. Okay, so here we are. I am going down to the first class seats. Oh, damn. That's fancy as fuck, dude. That's much... This is like... So check this out. So we are. This is much down nicer than right the Shinkansen. First class premium seats. I love just this kind of um, shelled little carbon fiber seat that I'm sitting in right now. You can see that it's like super super shiny and carbon fibery, which is pretty cool. You have the table that comes out just like this. You have this reclining, like this control pad right here. So I can just recline my seat just like this, and I'm reclining back and back and back. And you can put your foot rest up as well if you want. That's kind of nice. You get a little like leg rest here. And I think this right here is a light. I just love these wide open and skylights, sky windows. You can see the blue, blue sky. I love it. Oh, you have, you even have like a little... This is actually surprising to me. I've traveled um, in a lot of places in Europe by train. I've traveled in Japan by train. And I've taken the train in America. And oftentimes, the first class difference between the economy is just like very slight more legroom. This is actually a surprising... Uh, this is actually a surprising change for... For the difference between first class and like regular economy most trains they don't like give you an incredibly luxurious uh, uh first class they don't really differentiate between first class it's just like a slight tiny bit more leg room usually little coat hanger right here this is pretty cool this is perfect but i I'm guess like, it makes like sense because this is like pod if you want you can shut the windows just like this we're gonna leave them open because we want to see the view this is definitely premium and that's only like nine dollars. Yeah, they're not like they're also the price differential. The price difference between first class and economy in trains that I've been on, at least, are uh, rarely that big. You know what I mean? It's like twenty, thirty, sometimes forty bucks more. You know what I mean? It's not like massively different um, in comparison to economy versus first class in like planes is insanely different. You know what I mean? International flights. Uh, the economy, if the economy tickets are like $1,000 on an international flight, like first class would be like $8,000. You know what I mean? Okay, and here are the regular green seats. You can see that the seats here are not bad as well. They look pretty comfortable. They have the reclining features. They have a light, a little table tray in the front, cup holders. You know, pretty much everything you would need. Now I'm going to go down to the cafeteria area and show you what's going on over here. The cafeteria. So this here is the cafeteria area. You can see right here. Bro, this shit is too nice. And you can Bro, this is nicer than like like LA cafes. You know what Look I mean? It's into the crazy. Or into the ocean or the trees or whatever you want. And then there's some tables right here that you can also sit down, but you have to reserve. This is all pretty amazing. The aisle ticket to the cafeteria is quite narrow, but since it's facing the window, you don't get that claustrophobic feeling. And because of it, you get this lovely open kitchen where you can see the chefs freshly making each dish one by one. The menu itself is basically the same as you would get in the private rooms. So if you ride in the green seats, you can also dine in style. Oh, thank you. She gave me a card with a handwritten message. So nice. Oh, I think this is the restroom area. Ooh, you know. You know he had to do it to him for the one time, dude. He had to do it to it for the toilet heads, dude. The Paolo heads know. The Paolo heads know. We're pooping, dude. We're stinky. You know what I mean? We, we want to know what the fucking toilets look like, baby. And my go-to favorite in a pinch, the toilet. <laughs> he knows. Very self refer. He's he's doing self referential. That's Kino. That's Kino. Not suits. Step aside, suits. It's Paolo time. This man has a style guide. Okay, and he follows it to a goddamn T. It's pretty spacious. Standard toilets. You have the baby little carrier right here. So if you need to go do your thing, you can put your baby here or your little toddler. And then the 
there's even a changing scene right here. But all in all, it's like pretty spacious. And they've got private urinals too. Oh, I think the food is coming. Oh, the food's here. Yeah, for the person, for the now, porcelain Now, time to get her food on. The dining experience here is directed by Tetsuya Honda, a Kanagawa-born oh, Italian. Oh, look at that curry. Oh, my fucking Lord. Jesus Christ. I'm so hungry. I'm so fucking hungry right now. I'm such a hungry, hungry hippo right now. And also, oh, that shit looks good. Mmm. chef and owner of Restaurante Honda, which was awarded a Michelin star 13 times. On this spectacular ride, you can enjoy the perfect blend of delicate Japanese sensibilities and Italian gastronomical skill with local seasonal ingredients. That's the one L for Japan is like their, their obsession with Italian food from my anecdotal experience at least. Japanese people love doing like Italian fusion for some fucking weird reason. I don't get it. And for sure, I recommend ordering in advance before writing on their Saphir Pay app since the main menu items sell out quickly. So you can see here, this is application where you put in your order. You can just show them the QR code right here. They'll bring your food all here. We have this huge, huge table. In fact, they make the food in a cafeteria itself as you go. So usually you're probably gonna order just one for yourself, but I decided, you know, again, I wanted to show you guys all of this stuff to show you the full experience. So I ordered two different types of their exquisite pasta, some gnocchi, a luxury beef dish, and their signature curry, which was my favorite. Cool, they got some cutlery here too. You guys love plastic. So this is Honda's premium beef curry. Bang. That's like, d dude, this is what I mean. That's crazy. Th this part is like, this part is wild. $13 for like a meal on a incredibly like supposedly this like premium luxury train made by a michelin star chef in america you get on a fucking plane first of all they'll spit in your face if you want food sometimes is that cheap compared to the u.s it's so cheap dude what do you mean that's what i'm saying brother have you ever traveled by plane go to an airport and try to get, like, some dog shit sandwich, okay, that's been sitting out there for, like, hours and hours and hours, okay? You'll pay 25 bucks for a fucking sandwich. Damn, look how thick this piece of beef is. Bottle of water, $7, exactly. Mm. This curry packs a little bit of a punch. That is really delicious. Has a little I mean, bit of it looks tiny here. though. It has bits of onion. Wow, this is good. It almost has kind of like a luxurious, I don't know, expensive taste to it. I can't even describe what that is. The beef itself is super tender. It's like it's been marinated for quite a long time. There's a lot of flavor in each bite oh. of this beef. Wow. My mouth is watering. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, Mr. Paolo. Honda. Now I know why this is your premium curry. This is really delicious. Thank you. This is the spaghetti with fresh izu tomatoes. Oh, wow. You can really smell the tomatoes. It smells so good. I want to just try the tomatoes itself. Mmm. These tomatoes are rather sweet. They're delicious. Try some of this right here. They peppered it a little bit too. I mean, this is perfect because I think it's also good for if you have kids. It's not too sweet, but it's not too salty either. It's kind of in the, in the middle. It's seasoned kind of like for all tastes. The sauce is on point. And these tomatoes are phenomenal. I don't know what easy. <laughs> okay, that is literally the weirdest food review I've ever heard in my entire life. I can't be alone in this. He said... It's perfect for children because it's bland. Like, what? It's not too sweet and not too savory. That is such an odd way. That is such an odd way to review food, dog. The, what the fuck? He's a new dad parent brain, I guess. Yeah. That's odd. That's odd. He has babies. That's why. Okay is doing with the tomatoes but they are great another pasta option would be the sardine and fennel linguine topped with the herb breadcrumbs which my two-year-old son was also into it's perfectly seasoned and the crunchy breadcrumbs enhances the texture and flavor experience to another level and if you have kids or are just simply into gnocchi they offer a children's potato gnocchi with tomato sauce which has a milder taste on their pasta as you can imagine but the chewy and velvety texture of the gnocchi itself is perfect for all ages and if you want to go splurge you can try their 
red wine marinated beef cheek with potato puree. Oh. The meat is tender and moist, and it breaks easily oh. with a fork, while the wine sauce oh. bitterness creates that high-end flavor complexity. Fuck you. Oh, Fuck you, Japan. Fuck you. Of these plates comes with some water and some bread itself. We've got a lot of waters right now. Gonna have to bring all that home. Okay, Bland is so a desired are... food trade in East Asia. A better translation would be clean eating. Wait, what? are stopping at Atami right now. That's the local train right there. Basically, I don't believe this trip you. wouldn't be a trip if I didn't have, you know. What do you mean? How? I, every every part of, like, East Asian cuisine that I've had is is far from bland. Like, the furthest away from bland, as a matter of fact. It's the least bland. I have a little beer to celebrate it. And what's cool is that this beer is a local beer from a Shizuoka. Not too salty Shizuoka sweet area, is a compliment to food in, uh, for Filipinos. Pale, pale, oh. Han Shadow Beer. What is this guy? It looks like a wizard, I guess. It looks like a wizard. Wizards is that true? I don't know. I've never had like uh, Filipino food. I've never had Jollibee. I do know they put a lot of this like, uh, they eat like spaghetti so and ketchup, right? This, train ride. this is really the way to travel. Also, Filipino food is like ketchup spaghetti, right? And that isn't that like a thing? That's what I've heard. I mean, I know Jolly Bee is probably not like the best uh, example of Filipino food, but banana ketchup. So if you're not that hungry and just want something light, they do offer unique snacks and side menus, which can be paired with a glass of their Italian wine. Oh, that looks good. That looks fucking oh. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up right here. If you guys like this video, like always, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys wanna see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and that bell button. I'll catch you guys in the